Hello everyone, and so sorry for my triple chin. Um, that is what happens when you're fat. Today, we are going to look at the devil. <laughs> oh yes, dearest. You heard that right? Wrong password. You heard that right? The devil. Everybody always comes to me like, aren't you afraid of going to hell? Aren't you afraid of burning? Suffering, pain, and anguish, and horror. And I always tell them the same thing. No, because I don't believe in it. So, I got this lovely person to explain why most atheists don't believe in Satan, since most atheists, most, most most atheists don't believe in God and I keep on trying to explain this in a certain way that they understand but I myself with my family and with some friends I also get that where they put their fingers in their ears and go la 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 don't want to hear your explanation because I know what's truth and Let's be honest, it's a bit annoying. I, however, don't feel it is right for parents to teach their children about hell and torment and letting them watch um, uh, almost at fate like potatoes. That's actually okay, except for the part where the child gets run over by a tractor and dies. Um, not that, um, Passion of the Christ, there we go, that's the movie I was looking for. Now, Passion of the Christ was uh, quite a long thingy, and uh, it is annoying to know that parents let their children watch that, because it's truly gruesome, and it's disgusting how you could put your child through trauma because they have to watch a guy get beaten half to death put a spiky crown on his head and then get nailed to a cross and then poked with a spear in his side for some biblical text and it's funny also that they don't know the truth which is that Jesus didn't exist Sorry, he didn't. There's no historical record or anything to prove his existence. So, yes, this video that I'm going to show you is from Aaron Ra. We're going to look at a, a video. I just did a snippet from YouTube just to see what he says on this topic. So let's watch. I will have segments in between because copyright is a thing on YouTube. So every so 30 seconds or 45 seconds or whenever he makes a nice point I will come in and say hi <laughs> uh, yeah no actually I have to comment on it so I'll comment on it let's watch but looking at this image and every other depiction of hell from Hieronymus Bosch on down it all strikes me as utterly pointless and stupid he makes a point. It is utterly pointless and stupid. As much as the painting is quite graphical and very interesting to look at, because there is a lot of things. I, you can see there's one there that has a little bum uh, just beneath the bird eating a human that's literally farting crows out of his arsehole. Uh, just underneath it with the blue bird and his ball sack that is now shitting out a human being. Uh, there's a human just below that human being shitting out that is puking and one is shitting out coins. Very interesting, must admit the image is quite interesting to look at like you, you could stare at this for hours and you can find details beyond belief. But even that... No superior being would ever construct a hell nor maintain it. 
They wouldn't condone torment as a punishment and would not permit an eternal punishment for any reason. It is quite stupid. Let's continue. That is also correct. Why would you be a supreme being and protest to things that you could literally just snap off your finger and take away? Why make suffering available so that people get driven away from you just to torture them further in hell? Like, let's say you're a drug addict and you are trying to escape that world, but it's so hard for you because not only don't you have anyone to turn to, you don't have money, you don't have anything in your life that brings you back to your own self, your own being, and so you go back to heroin or whatever you do, and you get your fix just to escape your horror of a life on earth, and that's what most drug, drug addicts do. Not all of them, of course, I'm not a drug addict myself, I can't speak for them, but like I said, if you have nowhere else to go, what are you supposed to do? So you continue using drugs, you die eventually of drugs, just to get tortured in hell because you were doing drugs. That's a bit cynical, don't you think? Let's continue. No god worthy of worship would allow anyone to be damned according to whether or not they believed. Very true. Why, why would God care? Like, he's God, he's like everywhere, he's in everything, he is all-powerful, He, no one can match his power, and all that. Why would he care? Why would he care if I believe or not? Why does my belief in him strike him like this so rude? I also don't get that. This is not the criteria of anything that is really real. This is, a re this is required of liars who want you to believe that it's real because they want to believe it themselves and they can't maintain their own delusion if they allow you to question it or because they can't exert force if they can't evoke fear. And a number of Christians have told me that long after they rejected their religious beliefs, they held on to this lingering fear of hell. Which is true. Um, I myself, when I questioned everything, I also started like, you know, I can't do this because what if I go to hell, you know, maybe I should just believe for the sake of it, you know, just try my best to hang on to this thing that in my mind I know does not exist because there's so much evidence proving it does not exist, but yet there's this lingering sensation in my mind where I go, well, I can go to hell if I don't do this, so why? Just just keep on, just hold on, and that's why most Christians, even if they don't believe, still cling on to this thing of hell and fear, and, and why would God make a hell just so that people can fear hell to love him? That's kind of psychotic, it's, it's like an abusive relationship, it's like domestic, where man hits his wife or vice versa and every single time he says sorry I won't do it again just to do it again and so on and so forth as much as that scenario doesn't really work with this one it's the same principle in your mind like it's just the it's like a force like you will either do it or you'll go to hell Either believe in me, or you will go to hell. It, there's no other way. So, why though? Why? So but honestly, hell was one of the first things I gave up. Because it didn't make any sense. And neither did the devil. If Satan is an enemy of God, then what is his motivation? That was my, the first question I asked when I was a little boy and my mother first told me about Satan. Let's talk about it. what is his motivation, what is Satan's motivation? It's to, you know, get a cult, if you deem it worthy to say that word, to get a bunch of people together to 
stopped worshipping him and doing his bidding and being bigotful and hateful and merciless and killing and you know that that's what we got taught in church and in a uh, Christian school that we need to fear him because he's this awful awful being and yet he has a better explanation for us so because even after listening to all the Christian excuses trying to justify this guy, he is still the most unbelievable one-dimensional character I've ever heard of. Christians have not thought this through. Just look. Do they really think there's a devil that's been around for thousands of years and he's never read that book? Imagine, right? Imagine you were Satan. Wouldn't you go read the Bible and see the ending? And if he did know the ending, then it's all planned. It's like two gods going at each other, just going, oh, let's fuck with their brains then. Um, once again, not a very good god. Either way, he did create hell, he did create Satan, he created everything. So he's not that good. And it's about him? Do they really think that if there is a devil, that the devil wouldn't have to know way more about all of this than every Christian? Which makes me think, there may well be a Lord of lies, and I have the evidence to prove it. At all. Think about it. If the Lord of lies truly existed, what's the best way to get people to come together? What's the best way to get them to believe in one thing and one thing only? What's the best way to get bigotry, hatred and love out of it at the same time? What's the best way to do it? The Holy Bible. Every single person in this world knows of a Bible. Whether it's the Quran or our Bible. There are other Bibles out there. I don't know them never read them but don't you think that is the way to go i always thought to myself even when i was little i was like what if the devil wrote the bible and we're just blindly following into his head thing it's it's quite frustrating when you start thinking for yourself and when you go the it doesn't make sense. Because if there was an inherent evil, such as everyone wants to believe, it would have to gather followers in order to bring in the tithe. And it would rule with the stick and the carrot, with impossible promises that can't be fulfilled, weighed against the threat of a fate worse than death for all those who didn't believe. And heresy would be damnable too. If there was a church of evil, it would be judgmental and prohibitive inhibiting the natural drives of all its now dysfunctional devotees and would be manned by, by prejudiced and, and paranoid reactionaries perpetually, perpe ah, perpetually persecuting others while pretending to be persecuted themselves. And allowing no deviation from its mandates, the Lord of Lies would strictly restrict all forms of learning. Books would be burnt curiosity crushed, and science attacked above all amid a perpetual war against every other religious denomination. It just does not add up. It is true. If you think about it, it is true. Wouldn't he be the one doing all of that? Rather, one thing only and one thing only. You are not allowed to listen to anything else. You're not allowed to have knowledge. You're not allowed to seek for the truth. You just have to have one single truth, your truth, which is the Bible for most people. And that's about it. It doesn't make sense. And it wouldn't... <laughs> Vanity, jealousy, vengeance, and wrath would be the monikers of an evil deity. And this is the worst ever. It would force believers to submit to 
unreasonable conditions. It would order crusades, initiate inquisitions, and lead villagers on witch hunts. It would protect and promote or permit child abusers and molesters seeking genital mutilation. Which is true. It's all in the Bible. God permitted his followers to kill and rape and marry their rapists. I mean, their rapees. It was gross. It's disgusting. If you really read your Bible, it is It's, it's, I'm going to use the very Christian word, blasphemy. It's, the whole thing is just up, outrageous. It's grossly. And it would manipulate the masses only to oppress them. Each of the atrocities ordered by God in the Bible is more demonic than divine. Don't give in to the lesser of two evils. Reject both. In an educated civilization where civility is based on humanity as opposed to superstition and fear, the concepts of God and the devil are superfluous. You all know who this girl is? Look at this child. Is this the face of a demon? Or is this the look of a skeptic who's not buying your bullshit? And that's how people look at me all the time. It's like they think I'm possessed. Um, we went through this with my Facebook comments uh, two videos ago where my family members said that the devil was trying to get hold of my soul, whatever. And <clears throat> no, it's not. I don't believe in the devil, nor do I believe in God. And when you say that to a Christian, they say it's because the devil don't want you to believe in anything, so that's how he gets you to be a horrible person. But I'm not a horrible person. I haven't changed at all. I have changed from religious to non-religious. I would say slightly spiritual, but spiritual in a way of saying, wow, this tree is beautiful. Look at the sap coming out of it. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. But not spiritual as in, let's praise a god, because I don't believe in any of them. I believe in what I can see. I see beauty in Earth, in the creation of Earth. I, I see the beauty in evolution. I see the beauty in, in the stars, the galaxies, the oceans, the animals, the the plant life, everything. I see beauty in every single thing. I don't necessarily want it. I, I need to put a deity in my life to tell me what I can cannot do. That said, I, I, I don't say, like, go murder everyone, because in my own self, my life, that's horrible, it's gross, and that's where moral things come in, but we're not going to talk about that because that's a whole other section. But if you get hurt, let's say if you get hurt, it's painful. Like imagine hitting someone with a hammer over his head. What the fuck? That must be so horrible, that must be grotesque. and. Doesn't that just imply that, hello, every single human being on this planet, except for some few with nerve problems, have pain. They feel pain. Whether it's heart, brain, whatever, they have pain. And can't we just live without it? Do we need to always force ourselves onto other people? The problem is, it's the same glare either way. And that's why we're lumped in together. This is the way we look when we realize we're being lied to. When you realize that all of the fables in the Bible began, as, began in the hearts of superstitious primitives who just made it up. It's man-made mythology and there is no truth in it. Absolute truth. Um, there is no truth in it. It was man-made. A man 
Not a woman, man-made. It was man-made. Men wrote the Bible a couple of thousand years ago. And people started believing it. How in the fuck did that happen? What was so bad that they had to call upon their own imagination to create something so vile and oppressing and demeaning? It's beyond my imagination. My mind does not work that way. I like it. Quality. I like women to have more rights than men, to be honest. Um, I would like everybody just to be equal in some way. I know I'm contradicting myself now, but I like peace. I like harmony. I like happiness. I like joy. My previous video, I was extremely angry, and I apologize for it. I was angry. So I take my anger out. I had a debate a few nights ago with my mother and my brother again <sighs> with the gay thing so and why should it be a thing because it always comes up as accepting or not accepting you know why is it there why do you have to why do you have to choose whether you accept or not it's a thing it's it's me you either accept me or you do not so we have had that conversation over and over again but that's also for another time there's no heaven, no hell, no Eden either, and there is no devil. He was invented by Persians, adapted by Jews, and embellished by Christians. He was never the serpent, nor a fallen angel, and he can't steal your soul because we don't have souls. Exorcism isn't real because demons aren't real, because magic isn't real. We are not cursed. We are not fallen. We have arisen and we don't need salvation because God literally doesn't give a damn what happens after you die. Because then, neither of you exist. There is no goddamn devil because there is no God. Damn! You just die and that's it. You're not immortal. You're not eternal. And to believe otherwise is to diminish everything that you really have. Life is precious because it is short and there's nothing after it. There's no destiny, and there's no purpose beyond what you give it yourself. If you want your life to mean something, try making someone else's life meaningful. Because... It's true. If you don't need a deity to make your life meaningful. And like you said, try and making someone else's life meaningful. Try and lift someone else's spirit up, and I say that in knowing terms. Um, as most people know, I, I was dabbling in witchcraft and stones and whatnot, and I wish it was real. I really do. I wish it was amazing. I wish it was cool because I love magic but it's not I have tried so many times to do amazing things but nothing happened sometimes something did happen like let's say I wish I get a job then I get a job and then I'm like hmm I made that happen no, I didn't. I literally sent them my CV. I went for the interview. They liked me. They took me. After all the other 50 fucking thousand whoever people went there, they took me. So, it's nothing to do with magic. It's all to do with personality, your, your strengths, your will. And I know I say that very lightly as well. Like... I personally believe in free will, but not all atheists believe in free will. They are very, very... more. Most atheists are, of course, smarter than I am. I am not smart whatsoever. But some atheists say that free will does not exist, also for another day. But I believe in free will. I believe you have to will yourself to do anything. 
I'm willing myself now to go jog and do exercise because if I don't force myself to do something about my weight, nothing is going to happen because I'm not just going to lie in bed and go, I'm going to be thin tomorrow and then tomorrow I'm thin. No, it doesn't work that way. You're going to have to work for what you want to accomplish in life and that's exactly what I'm going to do with my life. I'm going to sit around and wait for it to happen. And that is the end. Thank you. Because regardless whatever else you believe, history will be our judge. And stop waiting and wondering about some posthumous promise or divine damnation and learn to live and love life. Yes, just why praise something when you have done it yourself? Why be someone when you are yourself? Don't ever change for someone else's purpose or for someone else's life just because they don't like it. If they don't like it, screw them. It's your life. You have a purpose, I say that very lightly, in this world for yourself. It's your life. Make it the best life you can in this world. And you may or may not be who you truly want to be in your life at the end when you die. Just be whoever you want to be. Be the best and the most kind and the most loving and the most compassionate and the most fearless person you could be. And don't... Just don't always listen to what other people say to you. Like, I get called names all the time, but I don't care. Some guy commented, and usually I do this, and I should probably stop, but when someone comments a nasty comment on my videos, I pin it because I think it's quite funny. Um, for myself, I don't really care. If you don't like me, scroll away. You don't have to watch my videos. I'm not forcing you to watch anything of mine. In fact, I begged you not to, uh, but that is your choice. It's your choice to click on my video. It's your choice to give it a thumbs down. It's your choice to watch it till the end. It's your choice. Everything comes to your own decisions. And that's another thing that Christianity teaches is that you can just take your problems away by praying. And it's disgusting. That's not how it works. You're going to have to apologize to the person, not just to God. You're going to have to go to the person, apologize to them for your wrongdoing, or vice versa. You can't... You can't worship a deity and pray to a deity to take all your problems away, because it doesn't happen like that. You are going to have to work on yourself. You're going to have to live for yourself, for no one else. Think about yourself and your well-being and then you will see the light in yourself that you can help others, you can prosper and be kind and be loving and just enjoy life. And when you get that knowledge and that joy of knowing that you are free, and I'm saying this in the literal sense because once I figured out that none of this is real, is like a whole mountain lifts from your shoulders. It's freeing. It's amazing. It's stunning. And just search. Just do research. Everybody has Google. Everybody has YouTube. You just type in anything you want to know. Type like in the whole sentence. There will be a lot of things popping up. So just go and do your research on everything. Thank you everybody for watching this video. Um, it was quite serious, but also I didn't make as much fun as I did last time. And my English was quite impeccable this time, which is quite weird because I've been in Afrikaans household for about a month now. So I'm supposed to be Afrikaans all the way, but I'm not. So.
yes, like, subscribe, if you want to, uh, watch the video if you want to, and yes, just be happy, be peaceful, be free, be amazing, be you, don't ever change for anyone else, because that's not worth it, at the end, you will feel more depressed than anything in this world, so just be you. I will link a few of my uh, biblical researches down below so that you can have a check out, so that you can do your own research there and you can look up your own thing. Don't just take my stuff for it. Always do your own research because you might find something new and you might want to debate it or you might want to message me or message someone else that you know that is a uh, skeptic like me and you'd like to know the actual facts of the matter. Once again, I'm not a scholar. I don't know everything. I still research every single day for every single thing. I'm busy writing the whole, rewriting the whole Bible in a good sense. I'm not like taking Bible stuff, well I am, but um, I'm taking every single piece of the Bible and I'm putting research into it. I am trying to piece together where all this comes from and also why everything is wrong, why it contradicts each other, whatever. And that's going to take me about years. <sighs> but, yes, just do your own research. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was a very nice video, I believe. And I will see you on the next one.